We have Stephanie Coffin from Atlanta, and she owns 17,792 shares. Oh, 17 shares, I'm sorry. Gosh, she owns 17,000. 17.79. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I don't represent the Sierra Club, really, and I don't represent anyone except for myself, except that I think what I do represent is the 99%. And the 99%, I'm sure you're hearing, hearing more and more about the 99% as people make their voices known across the country. Um, but the 99%, I think, have a nagging problems with the Southern Company, and very positive presentation. But I, like hundreds of people, thousands of people in this country, watch the frontline shows on TV about Fukushima, and watch the latest program about Ch Chernobyl and the, you know, the, the nuclear disasters, and just shudder think about the Southern Company building two nuclear power plants. And that is a really nagging thing that we all share. The second thing that people have, I think that people have problems with, is the water usage that these nuclear power plants are going to um, use up. I understand that there's still, in one day they're going to use more water and cooling than, than the city of Atlanta. And if you live in Georgia, you know that we have incredible water problems that, that are probably just going to continue to reservoirs, problems with reservoirs, problems with sewage. Water is a huge problem, and these global plants are going to use up a, a lot of water. Um, third question that I think that many people are asking themselves, I know that you laid out some baby steps in terms of renewable energy, but people who read the paper every day read that 19% of our energy could be supplied by solar. And then they know that, that offshore, wind, offshore wind is very possible. So this kind of barrage of, yes, renewable is possible in Georgia, just does not come through in your presentation, and it doesn't come through in your performance. So my question is really, from the standpoint of the 99%, those of us who want renewable, clean energy, how is a Southern company going to address these these questions that I think that are maybe not up, not represented in your the people up in the front rows, but my next door neighbor will have the same question. The people down the street, the people that I meet every day, have these questions, and I think that you haven't addressed them not only here in this meeting but also in your performance. Well, ma'am, thank you very much for your question. Um, three points. Uh, the first one was about news. I think I pretty well covered that issue. We have scale, we have the best financial integrity, we have excellent operations. I think the technology that we're using is the cleanest, safest technology on the planet today. Um, I think we have the demonstrated capability to be able to execute that, that big project. Um, the second thing that you mentioned is water. Uh, I think that is a wonderful topic. And in fact, we covered that at our stakeholder meeting. Um, I, Chris Hobson and I, Chris Hobson is our chief environmental officer. I think Chris is here. Where are you, Chris? There he is, way back. Um, I think, frankly, water, more than air even, is the issue of the future. One of the things you should be very proud about, Southern Company, is that we are a company that is engaged in offering solutions, not just rhetoric. We remain the only company engaged in proprietary research and development. We're the only company uh, in America today that has a 1,600-person engineering and construction services group. So we have the credibility to be able to deliver what our words say, and we do that relentlessly as well as anybody in the United States. In our research programs, we are the only company in the United States really now currently engaged in deep carbon capture research. We run the nation's, the DOE's, National Carbon Capture Research in Wilsonville, Alabama. We're doing uh, evaluations of scale of carbon capture, both on a pre-combustion basis at our Kemper County facility. Remember, we're going to gasify coal. We're going to strip out 65% of the CO2. It will have the environmental footprint equal to or better than natural gas. We'll take the CO2 not as a waste. We'll use enhanced oil recovery and push out more domestic oil. Imagine that, using a resource in Mississippi that is otherwise lying fallow, 
producing more domestic oil, producing more domestic electricity at a very economic profile. And it kind of has an economic profile of a nuclear plant. Relatively high capital cost, but very cheap energy for the project in Mississippi. We're evaluating at scale uh, carbon capture on a post-combustion basis at Plant Barry in Alabama. But we just don't stop at evaluations of carbon going to water. We're the only company in the United States today that has dedicated research and development facilities to evaluating, minimizing the use of water at our generating facilities. We have a re research and development facility we've just opened up at Plant Bowen in northern Georgia to that end. And likewise, we're the only company in the United States today that has research and development facilities dedicated to mercury and have for some years in Florida. So for all these reasons, look, I, I agree that water is a big issue. But let me make sure we get our metrics right. When you look at Southern Company's water consumption, we return at the same or better condition to the environment 95% of the water we use in our generation processes. The other 5% is evaporated. So it gets returned in the form of uh, rainfall. It's just evaporated in the atmosphere and comes back. So water, I think, is a critical issue, but I think you're talking to a company that more than any other company in America is a leader in conserving water and thinking about it as a strategic issue for the future. The last thing you mentioned were renewables. I think I've said before, renewables are important, but what we've got to deliver, clean, safe, reliable, affordable. Renewables right now are a lot more expensive than other forms of energy. We think in the future, particularly for thin, thin film solar, as I mentioned before, sometime in the future there may be a crossover point that may make sense. And so that's why we're experimenting and looking and investing right now in some of these other issues. But recall, roughly 48% of our customer base makes less than $40,000 a year. To those people, every dollar and therefore, we've got to look after them to deliver the most economic, most reliable sources of energy now. We are committed to delivering the best profile of energy mix in the future. We've demonstrated that in our move away from coal towards natural gas. And we've reduced rates in Georgia, for example. Our fuel rate recently went down 19%. The total bill to customers went down 6%. So these are the things we're doing, not rhetoric. Thanks for that.